What's up everybody, Zach here with Review Empire and today we're gonna to be making a drunk chicken, which means that the chicken, we're gonna get out some shots, we're gonna have a little party, and the chicken is gonna stagger out at the end of the night. No, I'm joking. But we're gonna put a beer can up inside the chicken. I don't know who come up with this, but I've been doing it for about 15 years. It's a great way to cook a chicken. If you came here today, I'm sure you're wondering, how exactly do you make a drunk chicken? Do you have to buy good liquor? Can you get the cheap stuff? The correct answer is you don't have to buy liquor at all. All you need is one beer can for the chicken, a few beer cans for you, and next thing you know, you're gonna be eating good, I guarantee. So what we've got here is we've just got a chicken. Uh, this chicken came with the neck bone still attached. I am gonna smoke that and give it to my dog, which I highly recommend if you've got a dog that you want to be even better of a friend than maybe they already are. Give them a smoke, chicken neck, they'll love you. Anyway, so what we're gonna do, make this nice and simple. If you haven't already, hit the like button for me and consider becoming a subscriber to my channel. Always doing stuff like this. But what I did was I took this out of the package, I removed the neck bone, then I took a paper towel, dried off all the water, let it sit out in the air. You don't wanna let it sit out too long, it is a chicken. You wanna think about, you know, the heat and microbes and blah, 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 whatever. Now that it's nice and dry and clean, I've got some grapeseed oil here, and I'm using grapeseed oil because grapeseed has a really high smoke temp, so it's gonna cook for a long time before it cooks off of the chicken, and it's just gonna last a while on the meat. And so hopefully what it's gonna do is give us a good skin with a good bite through. So that's really all you have to do is we've got it covered in the grapeseed oil. Now what we're gonna be doing, we're gonna be adding salt to the bird. Really and truthfully, you could just add salt, pepper, and garlic to this and have a pretty good product. But I like to add mucho flavor. And so we're gonna be using Jack Daniels Chicken Rub. You can check in the uh, description down below. I'm gonna put a link to this so you can check this out. Go to Amazon, get you a bottle. I'm telling you, it's delicious. You can make that judgment on your own. I apply this stuff pretty liberally. You don't want to have not enough flavor. You would rather have too much than not enough. Because you gotta remember, you're really seasoning the outside of the bird. A lot of the seasoning is going to cook off and as the fat runs off the bird and as the fat cooks down, the season is gonna run off with it. And so you don't have to worry so much about, oh man, if I over season it, blah, 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 whatever, not so much. I like to put a little bit down in the cavity and make sure that you get all the surfaces so that every bite that anybody who's lucky enough to try your cooking is just as good as the bite they had before. I know that I like for all my bites to taste good, and so if I'm cooking for people, I want all their bites to taste good as well. And that's it. All that's left now is to uh, put the uh, beer can into the chicken. In this situation, what we've done is we've gotten one that wasn't ice cold, what happens is, if you've never heard this before, if you take a really cold beer and you put it inside the chicken, then what it does is it actively keeps the inside of the chicken a little bit cooler, which is, you know, closer to your deeper, thicker breast meat anyway. And so you're gonna have trouble getting the breast meat done to the temp that you want, about that 165 mark, without overcooking your thighs and your wings and your legs. So. What we've done is we've just got a room temperature, Bud Light, uh, got about three quarters of it in there. And something simple that I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put a little bit of the shake in there. Cause what's gonna happen is that beer is gonna cook out just a little bit. You can put herbs, rosemary, thyme, sage, whatever you want. I've seen it done a lot of different ways. You can throw some butter in there if you want to. You can do all sorts of stuff. But for me, just a little bit of seasoning, a little bit of beer so that that alcohol evaporates and cooks out into that chicken, keeps it moist while it's cooking. So you just make your own, make your own beer, do it how you wanna do it. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take the chicken and we are going to put the beer can right there. And we're just going to easily sort of set it over the top. Sometimes uh, I've seen people use these uh, manufactured metal things that hold the, hold the chicken up, those work really well. Um, I have really good luck just sort of working the beer can into the chicken's body 
and propping it up just like you see right here. You want to be careful, make sure that you've got it stood up really well. It can fall over once it's inside getting cooked. But if you're careful, it's decently sturdy. Just make sure that you're checking it from time to time. Today we're going to be cooking a beer can chicken using a snake method on the barrel type grill. I had a special request from one of my subscribers. This is for you. Uh, we're going to cook this drunk chicken on here today to demonstrate that you can smoke a drunk chicken on this type of grill without having to have the side barrel or anything like that. It's just a way that you can get her done without having to go and spend extra money on another type of cooker. So what I've done is I have lined up my charcoal. If you watched my how to cook the snake method, you know that it was not nearly as much charcoal. What I had initially was two rows with one row on top. And that's kind of how you're going to get in my experience about 225 out of this barrel type grill. Uh, with having a three, three charcoals across the bottom and then two charcoals across the top, this is going to get me at about that 350, 375 degree mark that I want this drunk chicken to cook at so that I can get it done in about an hour and a half, two hour mark, something like that. If we have to go a little bit longer, that's what we're going to do. But I want to get that high temp so that I can get a nice color on my chicken skin and hopefully get a nice bite through on that chicken skin so it won't be tough. I've got it all lined up. I've got some paper stacked up under the end. And so what we're gonna do is we're going to light my torch. I'm just gonna get this stuff going here. I got a little paper under there and we're just gonna just let this torch run to those coals until we get it nice and lit. We're gonna go ahead and put the grates in place. And here in a minute, we're gonna be bringing the chicken down and put it on the grill. All right, everybody, so we're down here at the barrel grill and the temp has shot up. If you wanna take a look, you can see that the snake method is really kicking in. It's burning down. If you watched my previous video on how to do the snake method, you remember that I had it wrapped all the way around, but we're only wanting to cook this for about an hour and a half, two hours, as opposed to those six hour plus times when you're either cooking ribs or you're cooking a Boston butt or a brisket or something like that. This method requires a thicker line of coals for more heat, but less length because you don't have to have it in there quite as long. So all we've got to do is just take this chicken, set it down here like this on the far end of the coals. You want to make sure that the legs are touching to help prop it up. So you got your beer can holding it up here. The legs are holding it there. Once these coals burn all the way down, what I'll do more than likely, if we're not at temp yet, uh, we're going to shift it down to the far end where there's nothing but ash and that's going to work out for us. If you don't have this rack in your grill, you can put it wherever you want. I've got this upper rack, so I have to put it to where the rack doesn't affect the chicken. So we're going to shut it down now and it should be good to go. All right, so we have reached our desired internal temp and actually went over by two degrees. We're looking for 165 in the breast and we are at 167. It, it just looks phenomenal. You can see it's got a beautiful skin, a beautiful bark on it. It's the breast is at 167. The thighs are at 176. And so we're getting exactly what we hope to get. And so we're going to, we're going to pull it now, let it rest for about 10 minutes. And then we're going to cut it up and see what's going on inside the chicken itself. It's going to pick it up. You want to be careful because this thing is juicy as it can be. Got that off and you can see, like I said before, we've got plenty of charcoal left. If we needed another hour, we could have another hour. So if you're mimicking what I'm doing, remember I did three wide with two on top instead of two wide with one on top like I did with the ribs. We want a higher temperature with this chicken for a faster cook and a crispier skin. All right, so we're going to take this up to the kitchen and uh, we'll see how things turned out up there. All right, so we have made it to the kitchen with the chicken. Kitchen with the chicken. The kicking chicken in the kitchen. This was done on my barrel type grill using the snake method and it took about two and a half hours and it just looks perfect. So if you've got a barrel type grill and you're wondering, can I smoke things? Can I cook stuff like this without going and buying the attachments or blah, 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 whatever, you know, to make it an offset smoker? Yes, you can. So I had to do a little voiceover work here, but as you can see, um, 
the chicken turned out beautifully. The breast meat was moist and succulent. Steam just rolling out of it. Uh, I hate that I had this audio equipment problems, but you can just see this chicken is falling apart. It is literally just as juicy as it can be and uh, you know exactly what you want and this is in the wings so this is in the smallest piece of the bird and it still was just very nice just look at the expression on my face I wish I was taking a bite of it right now man so good so good I really hate the audio messed up like I said because uh, it turned out just like how you want it to turn out I just want you to know that you can always uh, tune into my channel. Just make sure you hit the like button. Um, I would be really appreciative to have you guys as a subscriber to my channel. I'll teach you how to do this sort of stuff and I'll teach you about a whole lot of other things along the way. Just kind of join my channel and it's going to be a good time. I just don't know, like, who was the first person that came up with this? I assume there were some hungry people sitting around drinking beer around a fire, you know. I don't think there could have been any other explanation <laughs> than intoxication and hunger and chicken. I, I don't know.